Welcome back friends. So buying a used travel trailer. It's a good way to save you a ton of money if you get a good one, but it can also be a complete nightmare. So I've got 10 rules to keep you away from that nightmare here in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, quick side note, new merch down below, check it out, enough about that. All right, okay, so RVs, used RVs, what I'm going to talk about today is going to be towables. So travel trailers, fifth wheels, pop-ups, stuff like that. I'm not going to be getting into the Class A's, B's, those have power plants, that's a whole different realm, that's way out of my expertise. So today's we're just talking about towables, keep that in mind as we go along. Okay, I'm going to try to keep these in order. So the first thing you want to do when you're looking for a used travel trailer or fifth wheel or pop-up is know its value in the first place. A lot of people don't know where to go for that information. I've linked NADA in the description box below. Generally speaking, when you find your, your manufacturer or when you find the floor plan that you like, go punch all that information into NADA and it's going to give you a roundabout number of about what that travel trailer, fifth wheel, or pop-up is worth. So if you're looking at the ad and they're asking a whole lot less than what it's worth, that's a red flag. Some people think that's you might be getting a great deal. I look at it as a red flag. We'll talk about that later. Or if they're asking a whole lot more than it's worth, obviously they don't want to actually sell their RV. So go to NADA, pop in all that information. It's relatively simple. And make sure that you're both in the same ballpark when it comes to price in the first place. Okay, so you've researched the rig you want. You found one on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, wherever you're looking, RV Trader, and they're reasonably priced. What's next? You're going to, it's time to reach out to them. Generally, I like to keep this through text or email. A lot of people are old school and want to do stuff over the phone, but I find sometimes somebody will say something over the phone and conveniently forget what they told you. So uh, keep that in mind. If you've got a text or an email, definitely try to do it that way. The first question you ask is, what is the deal with the title? All right, so local laws are all different. I know this video gets seen all over the country. So basically speaking, for the most part, whoever owns the title owns the RV. All right, so find out what the deal with the title is. Best case scenario is title in hand. They paid for the RV. They actually own the RV. They don't have a lien on it. That's the best case scenario, okay? Another situation that's okay is if there is a lien on the RV, it's at a local bank, local credit union, or reputable bank that you've actually heard of that you can actually go and go to a branch and speak to someone and make sure that they're being truthful with you yes they do have a loan here for that RV this is what they owe on it um, etc etc so they, that bank will actually have the title those two things are very important now we've been shopping recently for RVs my mother-in-law is looking for a used RV my sister-in-law just bought a used RV you would be very surprised at the different situations titles are in, okay? People will tell you that they have the title, the title will be someone else's name, or it'll be a, a repo title, or it'll be a salvage title. There's a lot of weird situations you can get yourself in with the title. So if any, if the title is out of state, if it's hung up with some bank in, you know, Podunk, Nebraska, no, no offense to Nebraska, but we're in Georgia, yeah, you just stay away. That's probably not a good idea, okay? Um, local banks are okay, best case scenario is title in hand. And then you also make sure that the title, who it says it owns the trailer is actually the person you're talking to. You don't need to talk to somebody that's selling it for grandma. You don't know who grandma is. If there's somebody random name on there and somebody else is talking to you and trying to sell it to you, especially if they're asking you to make a check out to them and not the title owner, that's a red flag. It's time to get away from that. It's time for some explanations, okay? So make sure all of the title work is in order. It's not even worth going to see if they don't have their title in order. Okay, next up on the list, this is number three. When you're speaking to them, let's say they have a good clean title. Uh, it's either at a local bank or they have title in hand. All is good there. Ask them, the next thing you need to ask is, how is the towability? Are you gonna be able to move this thing? Does it have good tires? Uh, you know, just because it has good tread on the tires doesn't mean they're good tires. So they need to make sure the, your, the tires aren't dry rotted. They don't have a severe flat spot. Uh, there's a lot of different things that need to be addressed. 
Ask them about the brakes. When was the last time you used the trailer? When was the last time you towed the trailer? Some, a lot of these trailers, they take them to parks and they just park them for years. And so the bearings have never been serviced. The tires haven't been moved in years. You could have a real issue trying to move the trailer. So make sure to ask them if they have had it serviced, you need to see those receipts. Can I please see those records? And um, make sure the tires are in good order. May ask them to send you pictures of the build code. You can There's a code on the tire. I'll try to link that in the description box below that it'll tell you the month and the year that the tire was built. So ask them to show you that or ask them to explain that to you. Um, also ask them uh, about, again, like the brakes. They may have never had the brake service. The last thing you want to do is hook up, start headed down the road at 60 miles an hour and have no trailer brakes. So keep all of this in mind. Are you going to be able to get the rig home? Okay, next up on the list, this seems like common sense, but people aren't always up front with this. Ask if there's been, if there are any issues, any major issues, or if there's been any major repairs. People, for some reason, they want to try to hide all of that stuff. And I, I understand the reason they're, they're being a little bit dishonest, but yeah, ask if there's been any major repairs, where those repairs were done, if they were done correctly. It's not uncommon for RVs to have to have repairs, but you want to make sure somebody did it that's qualified. Uh, make sure that it doesn't have any major issues. People are not always forthcoming. We just had an, a literally, uh, this is, I'm uh, filming this on a Tuesday, just this past Sunday we went to look at an RV, and I really had to do some digging. Uh, the guy would not tell me anything about it. Basically, I found out that the underbelly had been cut open, which is a huge red flag, and that the floor was soft, which means it's rotten, okay? If you got a soft floor, not good. Run, okay? I asked him what had been done about that. He said he stiffened it up. I said, you stiffened it up or did you replace it? Oh, I stiffened it up. Didn't say another word to him. Asked my mother-in-law and my wife calmly, it's time to leave, okay? So... Yeah, there's a big business out there with RVs that have been flooded, that have been totaled, uh, salvage RVs. Guys like to grab them, fix them up, patch them up, uh, you know, but, but what I call putting lipstick on a pig and then selling them as a good unit. Just be really careful. You really have to pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, then we'll talk about some more in that in just a second, but ask if there's any major issues, ask if there's any major repairs, um, sometimes they may have forgotten to put that in the ad, but sometimes they want people to have to ask about that as well. Okay, so we're, we're down to, what is this, number five. Okay, I got my little list right here. I don't want to forget any of them. Uh, so we're on number five. One through four, we're good to go. You're satisfied with the owner's answers. Uh, you got a clean title, etc. Number five is you're ready to go actually see it. Okay, so ask them, uh, the tip here, the rule here, is to have it operating when you arrive. All right, at least as best they can. You want to know if the AC works. You want to know if the furnace works, if the, or if the fridge works. The fridge, not, may, they may not have time to get the fridge to cool down all the way, but you'll be able to tell by feeling the bottom of the freezer whether or not it's actually functioning properly, okay? So have all of that work. If they can hook up the water, that'd be great, okay? Uh, you make sure you don't have any leaks, etc. So just have it operating, or ask them nicely to please have it functioning when you arrive to see it. Okay, rule number six, look for water stains, mold, mildew everywhere, okay? Do not leave one stone unturned. And by that, do, do I mean start digging in their cabinets and shining lights all up into the cabinet? Yeah, absolutely. I look everywhere, okay? Every little seam that you can think of, every seam on the outside, the, where this front cap's at, okay? Everything that can come in here, over, up in the, way up over in the corner, you're looking everywhere, you're getting in their business, okay? Now, ask them politely, and but they should understand, you're thinking about giving them a significant amount of money, okay? We don't want any surprises. And if they're selling you a legit RV, they don't want you to have any surprises, okay? So I'm gonna move you around right here for a second and show you, you've got different places to look. Most times these dinettes are storage underneath. You need to get, take these cushions out, Open that up, look underneath, all right? Looking behind the recliners, okay? Looking up way up in the corners up here in the bunk area. Every, every all the seams along the, uh, along the roofs, every single thing up in the, in the ceiling, you're looking around the seams, looking for water. Everywhere, spend some time, take your time. Take the drawers out, okay? 
we can get to we can get to this drawer this drawer comes all the way out you can pull that continue to pull that out and you'd be able to see in there whether or not water is intruding look everywhere for water you will be so glad you did and that's the killer of rvs in general is water intrusion so look everywhere for it number seven rule for buying a used rv look for clues things have been repaired even though you asked them a while back whether or not they've had any major repairs that does not mean they were truthful with you i hate to be that way but that's life okay so look for clues of major repairs i used the example of the rv we looked at just this past sunday the lipstick on a pig rv all right they had laid carpet down where carpet wasn't originally they haven't put carpet in rvs in quite some time okay this one was only a few years old i knew that that place was the, the wood looking linoleum but they had placed carpet down and they had done a pretty good job didn't quite match where the slide out carpet was they didn't know we knew that all right so that was a big red flag secondly he had taken off the auto leveling system and just put manual jacks on he just claimed they went out and he just wanted a cheaper version uh, that wouldn't go out kind of fishy okay maybe it's true but it's a red flag all right ended up being not true i'm pretty sure that rv had been flooded so look for clues for repairs take your time inside and out of the rig okay number eight number eight is something that not everyone's going to be able to do i understand that but do your very best get up on the roof okay bring a ladder if you're able uh, a lot of times rigs will have ladders uh, most of the time if the rig has a ladder that means that you can walk on the roof okay now sometimes owners have a, uh, the people that are selling you the rig have a legit concern that you might get hurt on their property i understand that okay so it's not always feasible that this will work some people are uncomfortable about getting on the roof other owners don't want you on the roof but do your best ask politely and if you can get on the roof absolutely do it we've done a video on how to uh, check your seals uh, I will link that in the description box below so you'll know what to look for up there. You're looking for old caulking, big repairs, patches, anything like that that's a red flag. Um, obviously, maintenance caulking, that's normal. That's actually a good thing. That means they've been taking care of the rig. But uh, go up there. I'll link that video in the description box below so you'll know what to look for. But get on the roof if you can. Okay, number nine on the list. Research and understand your local laws regarding paperwork. What all do you need? Let's say that you, this is the one for you. Like you found the perfect RV, everything lines up, you trust the owners telling you the truth, everything looks good, everything's dry, etc., etc. What paperwork do you need now? Well, obviously, the title is probably first and foremost in your mind. You need to figure out a way for either the bank that holds the lien to send you the title or it transfer to whoever your lien holder is going to be, um, or you need to have the title from the owner, okay? That's generally first and foremost. Secondly, a lot of states require a bill of sale. I'm linking a in the description box below a, a general bill of sale uh, builder. So you go in and it will basically build you a bill, of, a bill of sale if you need it, okay? So you can check that out. Make sure that works for you, okay? There's, a, there's different laws in different states. This is where you have to be state specific, okay? Um, but make sure you understand all of the paperwork. Don't just hand them the money and then drive off with the RV. It just doesn't work that way, okay? So um, just make sure you understand all of your paperwork legalities. Okay, last but not least, and this is not gonna work for everybody, but try to find a friend or a family member who knows more about RVs than you do. So if you're just buying, if you're buying a used RV, many times these are gonna be first time RV buyers. And there's a good chance with as many people that enjoy the hobby of RVing, there's somebody in your family or, or set of friends that will own one or at least know a little bit about them. So go grab them, ask them if they'll go with you. Four eyes are always better than two. Six eyes are always better than four. So yeah, if you can do it, if you've got a friend or family member that's familiar with an RVs, have them go with you. Okay, friends, here's what we need from you. I know a lot of you have bought used RVs. Please get down in that comment section and give us more rules, more tips on what to look for or not look for in a used RV. It's, it's fairly complicated, okay? I mean, there's, a, there's reasons that people buy new RVs for more money. It just takes a lot of this out of the equation. But sometimes you can find a good deal with a used RV. So get in that comment section. We want to hear from you. I hope this video will save you some time, effort, legal issues, and maybe even a bunch of money. Please consider subscribing. Thanks.